be joining as we go along, but this is uh, Jim Spore. I'm on the board of directors of ISIP, the International Society of Service Innovation Professionals. Um, and this is uh, our board of directors call. We invite all members who are interested to join these open board of director calls. Um, this, uh, uh, this is a special one because I get to thank um, our uh, outgoing president and welcome our incoming president and congratulate our new vice president. So um, let me go ahead and do that. Uh, um, Yasi, can you move the slide forward? Yeah, um, uh, do you see? Uh, um, okay. Do you see it? Uh, you should be on I think slide. I see. Are you showing the meeting agenda? I'm showing honoring our 20th oh, sorry, president. I'm uh <laughs> okay i do not see that i see uh i just see the uh oh the title slide yeah i see wow um, okay does every uh heather do you see the title slide or what do you see let's see heather uh, yeah wow. it's no it's not coming up yet i see Hold a on. nice beach i see a nice beach. oh there we go oh, yeah i, I see hi. yeah i see ralph up. Do you guys see it now? Yeah, now we see it. Okay, okay. great. Thank All you. Right. So, uh, once again, um, Ralph uh, Badinelli was our president in 2017, and we uh, you can read the accomplishments there, but I'd just like to pick out a couple and thank Ralph very much. Ra Ralph, by the way, is also a board of uh, on the board of directors of ISIP and has been there from the beginning. So. We should also thank Ralph for being uh, his many contributions to ISEP. Last year, he was a president. We saw membership grow. Um, we had new, two new academic uh, institutional members. Uh, we also had a great uh, NSF-sponsored workshop at the beginning of the of the year. And uh, whoops, now I don't see the list. There it is. It's back. Uh, a couple of discover, discovery summits. Um, and we launched two new uh, ISEP programs, um, a Service Innovation Excellence Award, as well as an Innovation Research Program. And we advanced the International ISEP with walk workshops in Switzerland and Italy. And there was a lot more. Um, this uh, summary slide just describes some of the highlights. But I want to thank you, Ralph, for your service to this community in 2017. Um, and uh, Ralph, I don't know if you uh, wanted to say say something or or stay on mute. Uh, just thank you for your kind remarks, and it was an honor to serve. Thank you. Great. Great. Okay, so my uh, next uh, role in this meeting is to uh, uh, introduce Rama Akaraju, who's our Isaac president. Um, starting January first, she'll be our 2018 president. Uh, it's a great pleasure to introduce Rama because uh, uh, Rama is uh, one of my very, very good IBM colleagues. And uh, uh, Rama has uh, many achievements. Um, she's a distinguished engineer, a master inventor. She uh, is currently a member of the Academy of Technology of IBM, a very select group. And she has uh, served both in research in the service research area and now is doing a lot with uh, uh, Watson. And uh, as you can probably read there on the slide, she's a prolific author, uh, speaker, and uh, uh, very active in a number of other uh, professional associations, including uh, those related to artificial intelligence and operations research. And I think um, the other thing that I want to say about Rama is, um, just what a great pleasure it's been working with her over the last couple months as she's really dug into ISIP, um, understood the history of things that ISIP has done, uh, talked to all the, as many people as she could on, on the board and in the executive steering committee, gathering ideas, distilling those ideas, organizing those ideas, working very closely with Yasi and a number of us to um, build a great uh, plan for ISIP in 2018. And uh, most of us were at the Hicks conference uh, just uh, 
earlier in January in Hawaii, and Rama presented this, and we had a chance to discuss it. So um, welcome, welcome, Rama Akaraju as ISIP president, 2018. Thank you very much, and Jim. Rama, I, yeah, and thank you for those kind words. And you know, I have uh, big shoes to fill here, and uh, I'm, but I'm very excited uh, to, about this role, and very much looking forward to it, and uh, very much looking forward to working with all of you in this. Terrific, terrific. Thank you, Rama. And now the next, uh, and we got a lot to cover, so I'm I'm speeding up, but uh, I want to just uh, congratulate Heather Yurko, who's our Isaac Vice President for 2018, meaning uh, Heather will be our president in 2019 while we're getting into the future there, Heather. Um, uh, Heather does a tremendous amount for Isaac, and um, she, uh, I, I should say she's also a chief of staff and lead for the future of work and employee services at Cisco. And so she, uh, she has service as part of her uh, day job, as well as uh, her volunteer role as Isaac uh, vice president. She serves many other roles in Isaac as well, um, helping us uh, with strategic planning, uh, uh, running a, uh, helping to run a SIG that uh, looks at uh, service innovation design. It was very successful, um, and um, I, I'll, I'll probably, uh, uh, I should probably also mention, Heather, that you played a really big role and your team played a big role in some earlier T summits that uh, Isaac co-sponsored. Um, it was great to see you at the HICS conference um, in Hawaii just a few weeks ago. Um, I also want to mention that uh, Heather's won uh, multiple industry awards, including an ERE award in 2010, uh, a Business Innovation Award in 2014, uh, North Carolina Technology Association Tech Award for Business Value Use of Technology 2014, a Gartner DPM Excellence Award uh, in December 2014. And um, so it's wonderful to have uh, uh, you, Heather, uh, as our incoming vice president. And with that, I believe I will turn it over. And Heather, do you want to say something so we hear your voice? <laughs> yeah, just um, thank you, Jim. I'm really looking forward to the opportunity to continue to work with ISAP. It's a great organization. I love it. Thank you, Heather. Um, okay, I think at this point I'm supposed to turn it over to um, is Rama. Rama next. Okay. Hey, Rama. So, I want to make sure we record it to post. Yeah, next. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Rama. Very good. Okay. Yeah, I want to first of all thanks, uh, th thank Yassi for um, uh, putting the deck together by compiling all of the information. And I know it, uh, it's a lot of work. work. Thank you so much, Yassi. You've done a phenomenal job here. And of course, all these highlights of Q4, a lot of credit goes to Ralph, who has been the, the main driver of several of these uh, initiatives. Um, um, so on behalf of Ralph, I guess I'm covering the highlights of uh, the, the fourth quarter. Um, Congratulations, Heather. Once again, 2018 VP elections were completed uh, successfully, and Heather uh, became the vice president. Um, and uh, 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 this excellent service excellence award was put in place by uh, Ralph. And uh, uh, this is the first year received two nominations. And uh, Ralph and team are going through the process. And uh, I think the, the winner will be announced uh, very soon uh, so we're very much looking forward to it this is a great uh, way to engage the community and uh, ralph has done a tremendous job in putting this in place and all the the work around soliciting advertising and everything and everybody else contributed to it so thank you everybody that's um, that's one of the things that's been accomplished in q4 um, further uh, definition for the isaac innovation research program and how it can create more value for industry members you know more thought went into it. What do, what do these research programs actually mean? And uh, some of those we baked into the 2018 strategy plan. Um, so you'll hear a little bit more of that. But uh, um, Ralph, feel free to um, jump in and add anything more that you want to say about any of these things uh, as I go along. Um, 
And um, another thing, executive committee was uh, put in place and uh, specifically um, an initial framework for this ISIP education program was uh, uh, piloted. Um, and uh, you know, good work went into that there. Yassi, please help me here. Who needs to be thanked for that, the education program? Um, it's uh, basically uh, a team effort between uh, uh, Haluk, Ralph, uh, Heather, DJ, Valerie, uh, Gerhard Gudergen, um, Cisco, um, Geodi Saran, a whole bunch of people who actually piloted this, uh, architected this, and is still work in progress. Yeah, thank you to all of those. Uh, a lot of a lot of work went into putting this in place, and we're very much looking forward to seeing results of that for 2018 as well. Um, a second Discovery Summit was held on Future of Work. This happened uh, um, thanks to Steve Kwan, who always hosts uh, it uh, in the Business School of San Jose State, a uh, great location, and a uh, lot of good discussions uh, uh, happened. And uh, this time, thanks to Heather, I think it was uh, live telecast as well it, uh, uh, to those who could uh, attend. And uh, we will try to do more of those with uh, for members live telecast of these uh, discovery summits in the future. Um, Hicks uh, was a lot of presence there at Hicks for IZIP. A lot of my workshops were held. And also our strategy discussion uh, happened there as well. So good presence there at Hicks. And thanks to everybody who made it there and also contributed to the workshops organizing and also for the discussions there. Um, I think this is Yasi. Uh, uh, this is uh, your work. Um, you just have been to uh, Japan recently and uh, worked with the team there on uh, with the JST Institute uh, on Society 5.0. Uh, maybe you can comment on that. Uh, yeah. What are some of the interesting highlights? Yeah, there there is a slide that I'll cover uh, shortly. Thanks, Rama. Okay. Go okay. Ahead. All right. And um, uh, again, ISIP 28 budget uh, was proposed and uh, the board uh, to the board, and uh, it's been approved. Uh, so that's good. So we are all set to go for 2018 to drive the projects and the strategy and the agenda that we put together. Moving on to the next slide, please. Yeah, so for 2018 goals, um, here are some other things again from discussions with various. Uh, um, members of ISIP, uh, both on the board and uh, active uh, members, and uh, feedback from various uh, folks involved. Um, this is uh, what we've come up with. Uh, we will. Uh, one of the top priority items for 2018 is uh, bringing a AI as a major enabler for service innovation. Um, and this is that we can see it in the in the trend that is happening. Many companies are now trying to understand what AI can do for them. There's a lot of momentum going into into this um, uh, currently, and uh, um, there are, there is a lot of work going on in various companies on you know exploring what AI can do, what are the foundational services that are needed, and how does one enable AI, and what kind of innovation can be brought in with AI. So I think it makes a lot of sense for ISIP to take that as a focus area for 2018, and uh, really help uh, clarify the space a little bit, and also. Uh, encourage more innovation here for uh, both the, the academics, students, and the industry folks. So as part of that big umbrella, what we have thought is that uh, we're going to have, um, uh, we're going to strive for two initiatives in 2018. One is uh, to catalog open AI data sets. Um, this, there is a lot of folks who want to build this, explore this, experiment with it, and uh, a lot of time goes into doing this right now. So good amount of work went into creating open data sets on iZip already. What we want to do is to also bring in a lot more focus around open AI data sets and, um, and to augment the ones that we have there already and also make it more searchable, findable, and bring up the iZip's presence in this space and contributions in this space. So that's one, one initiative. Um, work has already begun on that with, um, with a student in UC Berkeley. Um, Jim and Haluk, you have pointers to the template uh, I've just sent uh, before this call. Um, so we'll be working on that. Um, we will also be, we're also looking to, um, under this umbrella, build um, an AI service API kind of a directory. Um, this is uh, still in design, uh, but the idea is that there are a lot of services out there. How can we, again, spur more innovation by enabling people to compare, contrast, and get access to these services um, 
uh, quickly or at least understand what exists and and uh, and use that information. So that's kind of one big area that we would like to um, uh, shoot for in 2018. Um, and uh, another big initiative is also around um, uh, this ISIP uh, people-centered innovation methodology um, to better engage uh, with and network with the, uh, the ISIP community and enhance and scale it in, uh, with this people-centered innovation methodology that you know, Yasi, Heather, and several others have uh, uh, begun um, in 2017, and it has received good feedback. So we want to kind of scale it out and um, uh, also test it out more broadly with industry partners in 2018. Um, and uh, you know, all good things uh, will continue, right? You know, that's uh, there is no reason to stop or change any of those. So, um, so part of uh, the continuation of uh, the, the initiatives, good initiatives that have been put in place. If you look in third bullet, uh, the innovation projects program, the education reference model, and uh, the technology data programs, all of these that were put in place will continue, including the um, the the awards program. Um, so all good things will continue and do more of and uh, uh, do it do them with more energy and more engagement with the community. And uh, talking about more engagement with the community on bullet four, you'll see that some of the things that we are striving to achieve. Um, is to um, get more of the, the registered ISIC community members more involved, engaged um, in, in the various efforts that are going on. Um, and uh, in order to create more incentives for people to um, engage more, um, we are thinking about uh, bringing in the notion of uh, does it make sense to bring in badging um, and some kind of a professional development for folks uh, uh, where based on the courses, materials that are being developed, um, if they take these courses, you know, they advance through the badging and they actually can display those badges. And that's one way for more com community members to come and use and contribute to the content that, uh, that we can have and host on ISIP. Um, so we have uh, some folks who are interested in that. And if there are others who are interested in it and volunteers, we're actively looking for it. Um, Jim had this excellent idea of... Um, uh, can we create volunteer opportunities and track them and make them more uh, um, public and um, make it more easy for people to sign up for these volunteer tasks? And we're starting to think about what, if there is some kind of a tool or an open source platform that we can use to make it easy to post our volunteer uh, programs and um, track them in a more systematic manner. So we'll be looking into some of those as well um, as we go along. And we want to do more sort of um, understanding where people stand, why they're engaging and not engaging, those kind of things by um, you know, talking to people, surveying them and such. So these are some of the things that uh, we'll be doing. There was one survey that Ralph prepared that went out and results are um, coming up uh, on, uh, on some of these questions with the community. Um, so all things around building more vibrant, engaging uh, community who can contribute to content, write more, write more. Uh, the papers, blog articles, book, books to ISIP, and, and all that we will continue to do. Uh, those and those and to do more of, more of it. Thank you so much, Rama. So moving, moving. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, just, yeah, just one, one couple of things. To things to yeah, so, so we will continue to sponsor major conferences like HICS and HFE, and we're also trying to see if, if it makes more sense to do this with services computing and other area conferences. So we'll, we'll um, work through those things. And um, uh, getting institutional members to come and contribute is always a, a, an important uh, priority. And uh, that will be uh, ongoing as well in 2018. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. And uh, before actually I go to the next slide, uh, I, I also want to thank uh, Ralph in having been such a great president and having uh, uh, worked with him as the president of ISAB in 2017. It's been a, uh, it's been wonderful, and I'm delighted to be uh, serving under uh, Rama's presidency and Heather's uh, vice presidency in 2018. So looking forward to it. And also one other note: uh, the people-centered innovation methodology has been really driven and led by Heather and DJ Christman and Gerhard Gudergen uh, and Valerie Coriel, who are, who are uh, some of whom are on the call and uh, some it's too late for them to join. Um, okay, so uh, 
actually, sorry, the next person is Ralph. Sorry, Ralph, I thought it was me. I'll turn it over to you. <laughs> okay, uh, I just want to make one note of one of our uh, innovation amazing from last year, which year we serve as innovation award. Uh, we had two submissions submissions for the first year. I hope we get a lot more next year. We will be posting these submissions on the website and uh, newsletter, and uh, we will be announcing the winners uh, very shortly. We're in the process. The, the review committee, the awards committee, is in the process of reviewing them. And um, didn't quite make it for today, but we will be finishing that process very soon and publishing the results. Um, I encourage everybody to go to the website and, and look at the announcement for the Service uh, Innovation Award. The purpose of it is to promote and recognize exemplary innovation in the design and deployment of services. And so it covers uh, just about any kind of service innovation either from industry or academia, um, and, and the details of uh, submissions and so on are on our website. And when we post the two submissions we got this year, I think people will also get a better idea of just uh, uh, what's involved in uh, submitting a proposal. So I'm um, not ready to announce a winner today, but it will be coming very shortly. Thank you so much, Ralph. So uh, I will tell you um, uh, uh, about uh, our uh, a few events. Uh, one uh, was, as uh, Rama mentioned, our second Discovery Summit was held in Q4, November 13th and 14th, uh, thanks to uh, Steve Kwan and um, uh, um, sorry, sorry, hey, uh, Dean Moshavi. Uh, Dean Moshavi. Um, um, uh, we had the oh, nice, had the uh, nice uh, San Jose State, State uh, Lucas, Lucas Business, Business Conference, Conference. Uh, uh, and uh, San Jose State and Cisco sponsored the event, so thanks to uh, both. Uh, and we had a number of speakers, not only from our uh, member institutions, uh, but also from uh, Accenture, from NSF, UC Berkeley, um, Stanford, UC Davis, and San Francisco State. And uh, thanks to Hand and Mutis, uh, there's a white paper that's uh, under, uh, under development and will be published soon. Um, the next... Uh, event was uh, what I attended uh, at JST just very recently. Uh, it was uh, last week, actually, it was held in Tokyo. And uh, the topic was uh, challenges of society 5.0 approaches to social innovation. This is actually a very big deal in Japan. Uh, it is a government initiative to that uh, we were told for the first time the government is really focusing on uh, science and technology as a way of uh, um, growth, uh, putting a lot of focus on that. And um, well, what I was told that single-handedly, uh, Kazuo Iwano, who was on our board while he was at JST and now um, Kimura-san, uh, you see Kimura-san's picture here, who has uh, who who is now on our board because he uh, actually took the place of Kimura uh, Iwana-san at JST. Um, uh, he he influenced the government to think about science and technology in the um, what he calls reality 2.0, which is really about services that these technologies enable uh, us to deliver. So this uh, whole Society 5.0 is a national initiative uh, and uh, was driven by one of our former board members, uh, Kazuo-san. Um, and uh, he's currently at Mitsubishi and still very involved in, in ISAP. Um, 
So from the US, uh, you can see who attended, uh, some of our colleagues who have been actually at some at our discovery summits, Martha Russell, uh, who's the executive director of Media X, and then John Knights from uh, Xerox Park. Um, the goal of the summit was really to um, uh, to inspire and mentor some of the early career professors in becoming more entrepreneurial. So the group that came from uh, uh, the U.S. was bringing a perspective uh, from Silicon Valley. And one of the things that we discussed as a follow-on thing um, was potentially establishing uh, Japan-US calls to explore industry academia research synergies, um, specifically on AI and IoT and, and uh, you know, other uh, enabling technologies for digital services. So we're very excited about uh, uh, what might come out of uh, this activity and it was a great event and, um, so the next event um, is um, uh, our uh, participation at uh, HICS 2018 that took earlier in January. Uh, before I turn it over to Haluk, I want to thank Haluk for having been a great ambassador to HICS. Um, uh, we have uh, strengthened our relationship over the years. This was our fourth time actually uh, participating in a big way at Hicks, and I really thank Haluk as being a really exemplar ambassador. So thank you, Haluk, and I'll turn it over to you to to cover Hicks. I see Haluk is uh, maybe offline. Yeah, yeah I think that's the way. Yeah. Okay. That's that's uh, he did. Uh, um, actually, it's past the uh, bottom of the hour. Um, so um, we were a sponsor uh, at bronze level, um, along with uh, several other great institutions, including IBM. Um, uh, we were given uh, a lot of opportunities to marketize it. Uh, we held four sessions, and I'm not going to go through all of those, uh, but we had two tutorials uh, and um, actually three tutorials and one mini track that uh, has been co-chaired by Haluk, Jim, and Ralph over the years. Uh, and then we were really delighted to, to be um, part of the IZIP IBM uh, and University of Washington um, um, Cognitive Business Analytics Center that actually Haluk leads uh, a, a, an award. Uh, we got 30 nominations and uh, actually gave five uh, best paper awards. Now, this was the second year we were doing this. So uh, Thanks to IBM last year and to uh, IBM and University of Washington this year, it's been really a great opportunity for ISA. Uh, other events, uh, we had uh, uh, towards the end of last year, uh, we sponsored a, a Citrus event, a Women in Technology Conference. Um, for a one-day conference. Uh, we also um, continued sponsoring uh, the International Conference on Applied Human Factors. Uh, our ambassador to that is Luke Brond, and we are grateful to his activities uh, on that front, along with his um, T-shaped instrument that he's been developing and has been getting a lot of traction. Um, we also had a big event earlier this year, um, last year, sorry. Uh, it was the ISIP NSF workshop, uh, uh, which took place on March 29th and 30th. Uh, there is a report underway uh, that will be um, that will be available very soon. Uh, and then, uh, in addition to um, 2018 Hicks, we were at Hicks 50 in Hawaii. 
uh, with, again, a lot of activities there. Um, and uh, we held three innovation roundtables, less than what we've done in the past, but we were busy on other front fronts and, and hope to uh, um, have, have more of those this coming year. So events that uh, we have planned for 2018 will continue to support HEX 2019. Uh, we'll continue to support uh, human side of service engineering. Uh, uh, we have uh, one of our members, University of Warwick, um, uh, we had actually approved a sponsorship of uh, their last year event, the K2017 event, which uh, they postponed it to this year. Uh, so we're happy to, to collaborate with them there. Uh, we'll have at least two discovery summits, the topics of details uh, to be announced. And um, University of Washington uh, actually uh, has sponsored ISIP to sponsor other conferences, and we have some funding uh, through that sponsorship that then University of Washington would work with us to, to identify a conference uh, uh, sponsorship. So uh, we continued uh, on the uh, publication front. Uh, it's the Business Expert Press uh, partnership that uh, Jim and Haluk uh, uh, lead with Business Expert Press has a really uh, an impressive uh, uh, inventory of books now, 27 published <clears throat> and 12 in progress. Uh, and then um, uh, we... Um, I know Haluk is uh, working to on, on a IBM uh, uh, ISIP CBA uh, X research about uh, award uh, roundup to let the community know uh, what uh, what sort of uh, nominations we got and then who won and the topics and all of that. And then we are working, as I mentioned, ISIP NSF workshop, uh, that will be out very soon. And the Discovery Summit white paper uh, will be out very soon. Uh, at this point, I'll turn it over to Heather, actually, to tell us about uh, SIGs and chapters, good works. Heather? Yeah, so, so we, we do have, have a number of interest that have done a lot of good work over the last year. So we'll start off at the top and kind of go through the different highlights we have. So starting off with education and research, which is a Haluk and Jim. Um, we have 157 open data sets that have been pulled together along with 90 presentations and best student paper awards co-sponsored with IBM at Hicks, which is what Yossi had just mentioned over the, the past two years, um, as well as the ISAP NSF workshop, um, the student papers that were presented at, at uh, both of the, the Hicks. And in this upcoming year, um, we're looking to do a collaboration with the, um, the Service Innovation Framework Group um, looking at people-centered innovation methodology curriculum, so really forming a partnership between the two SIGs and looking at how we can drive uh, the, the PSIM curriculum forward, looking at certification there as well. Um, continuing on with our Wednesday speaker series, um, some papers and uh, again additional sessions at ISAP conferences and continuing to grow our online community. Um, the Service Innovation Framework Group which um, really is being fully chaired by DJ Christman. I want to be really clear about that. DJ has done an amazing job in driving a lot of this work forward along with Valerie Coriel this year. Um, there's been some great things that have come out of this last year's work. Um, the, the work around PSIM and the service innovation blocks with Gerhard Gunderbart and, and his um, set of graduate students has really produced something amazing. Yossi pulled together a great collaboration with SCAD, so it's, it has been an, an unbelievable group effort. I feel like it's a little bit of a super group, and I know I'm biased because I'm in it, <laughs> but it's just fantastic. They've, um, they've won the Red Dot Award, um, got a design award, the, the Silver um, Design Award for European Design um, through the, the 
really the pro pro proliferation of the, the design that SCAD had pulled together for us. Um, there's a lot of activity coming up for 2018. I'm really focusing on getting that curriculum pulled together again in partnership with um, the Ed and Research Group um, and looking at badging here as well so people can really start to go through that curriculum and take that back either to the universities or you know to, to apply within industry together. Um, we're looking to publish the service innovation blocks as part of Business Expert Press um, workshops for 2019 and making sure that we're getting additional piece and workshops delivered beyond the two that we've done at Cisco. Um, moving on to the service design SIG, um, there was a fantastic museum energy grant proposal that Leslie, Tom, and crew had pulled together. Um, it was submitted for the second stage evaluation and um, they came in fourth place. It was really, really close running. Um, they did a fantastic job there. Um, there are some case studies that they were pulled together in a service maturity checklist that they're also working on. Um, looking at next year, there's also some natural touch points between um, service design group and the service innovation framework group. So we've had a couple of joint meetings between these two SIGs. Um, they're also looking at additional partnerships with museums and other service design organizations to test out the SDN service maturity checklist. Um, moving on to our software defined networking group, there was a presentation given at Cisco Live this year. Uh, papers were first placed at IBM Tech Connect and um, also the NY NYIT Cybersecurity Conference. Um, they've also presented at IEEE at Columbia and received an NSF grant for secure cloud services. So there's a lot of good things going on within this group. Um, they're also looking to um, continue to present at um, some other conferences going into this year and um, continue to promote um, ed and research related to SDN as well as NSD. Um, finally, into our communities of interest, cognitive computing. There's a weekly speaker series that they have, um, over 110 presentations in their library around all things cognitive. And um, they have 1,070 members in their LinkedIn session group. So the group's kind of going like gangbusters <laughs> as far as pulling people together to have some, some great discussion. Let's go ahead and, and look at some of them. Okay, thanks. Um, thanks, Heather. Can you guys hear we me? The, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we can hear you, Yassi. Go ahead. Um, we have three main site chapters in Germany, Italy, and Switzerland. Um, we have had uh, about 2013 with these groups. Um, within Germany, um, the, the chair is completing a dissertation this year, so some of the activities were on hold. Um, but going into this year, it should be revitalized. Um, within Italy, there was a T-shaped track launched um, at one of our conferences in 2017. Um, they're continuing to support the University of Salerno as an academic institution member and also held a, a T-shaped lab there. So going into this year, um, they want to continue to promote um, ISAP in Italy and beyond. Um, they're looking at a new membership process. Um, also planning an ISAF summit or workshop in Naples later on this year, looking at student tours, um, taking students from Italy over to Silicon Valley, and also looking at planning a special issue. Um, and then finally in, uh, in Switzerland, um, Ralph, our, our president for 2017, spoke at the annual conference in Switzerland, um, and the chapter chair participated in the ISAF NSF workshop last March. Um, Good number of research projects started at six and um, seven expert groups up and running from topics um, that kind of cover the, the map IT and, and data ethics. Um, moving into 2018, they're looking at continuing to explore joint events in Switzerland and the US, looking at around the topic of smart service systems. And um, that is the, the update for our chapters and our things. Thank you so much, Heather. 
uh, I'll be quick. Um, so uh, by the end of 2017, we have uh, 34 total ambassadors, uh, which is the same as end of 2016. What we focused was really getting more ambassadors engaged. And I'm not going to read the whole uh, list here, but uh, there have been a number of activities uh, on, on different fronts and uh, we are really grateful to all of our ambassadors uh, across the world. You can see that uh, you know our, our ambassadors in Europe have been very active as well as the US and uh, we want to of course expand that to other places. Um, Last uh, of recognition, certainly not least, uh, our um, list of uh, volunteers. Uh, again, we have, uh, by my count, 72 total active volunteers. Uh, and for an organization that is over 1,200 members, we want to definitely expand this list. And uh, we have a survey out. Um, and would really appreciate all of you to respond to that survey as to how we can better engage our members. Uh, uh, so uh, if you haven't taken that survey, uh, please uh, go ahead and take it. And again, thanks to all the volunteers for the great contributions to ISIP. Um, an update on the operations side. Uh, so, um, we uh, continue to have uh, um, expand activities with our existing members. Also, currently exploring with uh, United Healthcare Optum, uh, potentially um, how we could co create value together, also with Accenture. Uh, and uh, um, Basically, University of Naples is going to also join uh, ISAP, and we're engaging other potential institutional members in our other activities and uh, co-creating value uh, for them to join ISAP. Uh, individual membership growth, uh, end of last year, we had 1,100, um, end of, uh, well, end of, 2016, end of 2017, we had 1259. That is 14% uh, growth. And uh, while that number uh, is, is a good number, uh, what we want to really focus on this year is really the getting the number of active uh, volunteers uh, uh, up. And again, look for your ideas to do that. On the financial front, I'm not going to read the, the whole thing. Uh, I'm going to leave this there. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions, uh, I'll answer that. The only thing that, uh, uh, you know, you might be um, asking, uh, last year's income and last year's expenses. Now, this is last year's income. Since we do cash based accounting, the uh, some of the 2017 income actually came in 2016. So that's why you see such a gap here, such a big delta. Uh, but the income actually came the previous year. So uh, uh, w we weren't, uh, if, if we weren't doing uh, cash accounting, uh, there wouldn't be such a big delta. Uh, and you can see a significant portion of our income came from our NSF workshop, which actually was uh, spent on travels and other uh, other activities uh, regarding to the NSF workshop. Um, and unless there are any questions, I'll move on to the next slide. And so, um, so as Rama mentioned uh, before actually ending this, um, the board passed the, the budget for 2018, and we are uh, in the process of passing the um, strategy document. 
Um, so thank you very much. I'll now open it up to Q and A. Uh, we have ten minutes for Q and A. Hey, Yasi. Yeah. Can you hear me? Hi. Yes. Oh, good. Hi. Um, yeah, there's a tremendous amount of uh, work in here. I'm wondering if we could go back to the slide of the 2018 plan that um, Rama presented. Sure. Oh, sorry. Oh, here we go. As a new president, I will ask Rama if she is uh, there. If, um, I just wondered on the um, uh, that first bullet, the bring AI as a major enabler of service innovation to the uh, to the center, and we have the cataloging of the data sets and the building of an um, AI service API directory. I'm just wondering if that might not be something we could connect to the um, uh, some sort of uh, education program or badging program. I'm just wondering about that. Rama, would you like to take that? I was sorry, I was speaking on mute. Um, <laughs> Jim, can you elaborate a bit more? Uh, uh, when you said um, uh, ba connected to badging, I think you meant maybe you uh, let me get it clarified. My understanding of it is that I, you are proposing that when students contribute to students or anybody contributes to those data sets and there is certain amount of some threshold that we set and if they contribute to enough of that passing the threshold, they get some kind of some kind of a badge. Yeah, because we yeah you have down there continue to build a vibrant, engaged community. There's uh, continue with the ISIT badging to showcase member professional development. And I'm yeah. just thinking that, you know, that's, uh, those two seem connected to me and they're far yeah. apart in the slot. So I just thought I would, I would uh, that's, suggest that's a that. Great idea, Jim. Uh, that's a great idea. I mean, yeah, I mean, we, we went back and forth on saying, you know, if we got uh, a student to uh, do this work on an hourly basis, could we, uh, you know, work out some arrangement for payment and all. And that probably would mm -hmm. still have to happen to get to do majority of the work. But once a good template is in place, I think um, mm -hmm. it, would definitely, it would be more easy for others to contribute um, right. the that they know. And uh, um, that, that's a great idea. I'll think about what might be a good threshold to um, set mm -hmm. for that to get a badge. Because it, it's not like they contribute one link and they get a badge type of thing. But maybe there is some, they add a new category and give enough. Um, uh, open mm -hmm. data set pointers there, and so some. If we if we can uh, define that level, that might actually encourage more people to come and contribute. And we don't even have to yeah. limit to AI services alone. At that time, with that that kind of badging mm -hmm. incentive, more people could come and uh, contribute in different domains as well. In the in the broader field of AI, it could be in healthcare, could be in other industries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a great yeah. point. I'll I'll make a note of it and uh, give it some thought on as to how best to connect. And I'm willing to mentor some students working on that. So. Okay, that's great. I actually invited you to that um, uh, the open data sets uh, project file, and you have the introduction to the mm -hmm. student. So, yeah, um, I'll okay. reach out to you offline so we can figure out uh, how to do this. Great. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much. Any other questions? We still have six minutes. Questions, comments, observations, suggestions, and don't be shy. All right. Well, going once, going twice, going three times, 
Okay, well, I want to thank everyone for joining. And I think uh, if there are no, uh, is there a comment or a question? All right, I guess not. Uh, so thanks everyone for joining and uh, I think we can officially adjourn. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.